so we're at the first stop off on our way to the Isle of Wight we are staying in well just outside Southampton tonight in a place called Woodland Lodge Country Hotel which is super dog friendly and we just stopped at Cobb's garden centre farm shop and had some lunch if you follow me on Instagram you'll know that we love a good farm shop we stopped here for lunch and it was okay it was quite overpriced for what it was I'm talking nine pound for a sausage roll and I do like to film farm shops and really anywhere I go so that you guys can see what sort of products are available um, I did get stopped in here for filming and the staff members attitude was pretty appalling I'm not a confrontational person so I did stop filming as soon as we started having the conversation um, I don't really understand why I wasn't allowed to film in there there wasn't any signs up saying that I wasn't allowed to film so I just found her whole attitude a bit off and it really soured the experience for me So we chose to stay in a hotel the night before. We like being in the vicinity of the Southampton Ferry so we can just get up and go first thing in the morning. We don't have to travel the two hours to get down. So we did some research and we found that this hotel was super dog friendly. We booked one of the larger rooms to give us extra space. It included this seating area and also a large conservatory. From there, there was also an enclosed part of the garden, which was for our private use, which was just so good for Alfie to be able to come and go. This hotel is Woodlands Lodge Country House Hotel in Hampshire. It literally backs onto the New Forest, which was absolutely amazing to be able to go through their beautiful gardens and straight into the New Forest. We really enjoyed exploring these lovely woodlands out the back of the hotel. There's plenty of paths you can walk along and just really explore. We even saw deer running around at, what, three o'clock in the afternoon? After our walk, we had a lazy afternoon just enjoying the sunshine in the garden with a couple of drinks. for dinner Paul had the fish and chips and I had the vegetable tempura followed by apple crumble for me and cheesecake for Paul. I don't think they're expecting a pony. It is Saturday the 17th of June, we are in the New Forest, just having a morning walk, it's half past seven, it's just rained, which is the first time it's rained since we were in the cabin on the 15th of May, so over a month without any rain, so it was quite nice. Would have preferred it if it hadn't have happened just as I was about to go for a walk in the forest, but, you know. So all of this walk goes on for, as far as I can see, is just outside our hotel. So you just literally walk through this gate and you hit the forest. Breakfast is served in the bar area and dogs are allowed in here too. I forgot to film breakfast, but just take it from me, it was delicious. So today we're travelling on the Red Funnel Ferry from Southampton to the Isle of Wight. We're booked on to the 11 o'clock ferry and we turn up about an hour early as we've got priority boarding and we really enjoy being the first ones on the boat. Three. 
No, it's two and a dog. <laughs> When you check in, the person gives you a little tag and also tells you which bay to park in. So you just drive along and find your bay number. Then you pull up into that and there you stay until you're called onto the ferry. There's a shop with toilets and refreshments and I would always recommend you pick up one of the Isle of Wight maps. It has all of the excursions and day trips you can do there. It's not very often we can walk very far without Alfie getting some fuss. He absolutely loves meeting new people though, so if you ever see us, do come over and say hi. Ferry stocked up with refreshments for humans and also ice cream for dogs, which always goes to sound so well with Alfie. It is a bit windy if you're sitting out on deck, so do remember to bring with you a light jacket or a jumper, even on warm days, as it can be quite cool. But you can go inside, there is a dog friendly lounge as well that you can sit in. The journey across takes about an hour from Southampton to Cowes. And because of the priority boarding, we're first off the ferry, which means that we can just get straight out of there and not have to worry about any of the traffic that could be caused by unloading the ferry. We'd actually chosen the same week to go away as the weekend of the Isle of Wight Festival, so we didn't want to go anywhere near Newport where that was taking place as we didn't want to get caught up in any of the traffic. So we decided to hop on this floating bridge which we haven't done before and it takes you from East Cows over to Cows. It costs £3 and it takes about 2 or 3 minutes to get across. It it isn't overly clear how you actually get on this ferry. There's a lane on the road that you basically sit in and wait until the ferry comes across and then you can just drive onto it. Once on the ferry, you're pulled across by these giant chains which make this loud clanking noise. Hence the name, Chain Ferry. This is Off The Rails. It is an old railway station that they have transformed into the most quirky and unusual cafe restaurant overlooking the picturesque Yarmouth Marshes. On arrival you check in at the Ticketmaster's desk and tell them that you've arrived. Once seated they give you this newspaper which has all of your drinks, food and also some history of the restaurant. It's a really fun experience. There's also an extensive doggy menu which includes starters, main courses and desserts. We got the sausage for Alfie which he absolutely loved and also some peanut butter biscuits. There's also two different flavours of dog ice cream so to say this is a dog friendly restaurant is a complete understatement. The quirkiness continued as I was served my veggie burger in a lunchbox along with a first class ticket. The delicious food the amazing views and the friendly staff made this a really pleasant visit.
and then it was back into the car for the final journey to the Airbnb, which was just the other side of Yarmouth, into Port Victoria, the country park. We got to the cottage slightly too early and the floors were still wet from the cleaner, so we just had a little wander around the fully enclosed garden, which is absolutely beautiful. The steps to the front of the cottage lead to a path that goes into the forest. The cottage is a lovely mix of old and new. I absolutely loved this vintage arcade game on the wall in the hallway. The stars come to shine when it's dark from so far away show us where we are what makes the sun go to sleep every night and what's it dreaming of i wonder Sometimes hides behind the clouds Maybe it's just like me A little bit scared of heights Why does the rain always keep on pouring down When it's grey outside It really makes me wonder There's a shared communal garden just to the side which leads down to the beach. So, oh, good boy! <laughs> Underground boiler and engine rooms. Provide yeah, power for the experimental searchlights that the Royal Engineers constructed along this stretch of the coast when they took over Fort Victoria in the late 1800s. Two large rooms. Yeah. 